brain fog, and even Parkinson's disease. Well, this one's for you. Hi everybody, I'm back. And in this video, this is where the tables start turning. I start to question his science and his diet and suggest that the way I eat, these are natural things here, that just fit right perfectly in your hand there, suggest that we should be eating these things. <laughs> Wait till you see how that turned out. I was just uh, speechless through a lot of this too, but for a different reason. So here it is, back on February 20, the debate between myself and Bart K. This segment was about the natural human diet. What should we be eating today? My uh, questioning of your science, a lot of things can cause inflammation, basically things that throw the body off balance, like uh, smoking, that's not even food. Mm -hmm. that sure. inflammation. Yep, absolutely. And I would say trans fats, if there's a lot of it in the blood, it could cause inflammation. Or, or even a very little bit there, Gary. Trans fats are very, very bad. Agreed. Oh, but what about natural trans fats? I'm not convinced. There, there is some discussion in the literature about you know a certain level of natural trans fats having a purpose in being you know uh, hormetic or good for you in, in a certain way. I'm not convinced. I would need to read more. Man-made trans fats are definitely, definitely bad. I don't think anyone would would disagree with that. Okay. I, um, now, see here, I was speechless, kind of because. I didn't expect that. I don't think he wanted it to come across the way he did. Maybe he didn't notice how that sounded. But to the average person listening, I was thinking, he just made meat sound bad. And if there were people listening from outside our circles, which I think is, should be the main reason we're doing this, those people are not gonna understand where Bart's coming from. See, when he said, I'm not convinced, he was just thinking about me. He wasn't thinking about the outside audience that he's trying to convince because he didn't clearly state that he doesn't think that the natural trans fats in meat are dangerous. He didn't really get that across. And so I just said, okay, we'll just let that go then <laughs> and move on. Gotcha. We've drifted off the science onto, we've, we've drifted onto anecdotes. None of this is helping anybody. So what's the next yes, topic? Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I think this is going very well. Yeah, for me. <laughs> <laughs> the last topic, the right diet for humans. Yeah. What should we be eating? Um, my opinion, and this is not advice because I don't give advice on diet. Um, I give advice on the science, uh, my interpretation of the science. Uh, and my take on that is that the indicated and sensible diet for human beings throughout the lifespan is a carnivorous diet. And this is not advice because I don't give advice on diet. The reason you think that is because of history. Well, no, the reason I think that is because uh, the diet appears to be highly anti-inflammatory, which is a good thing. It is nutritionally complete, which is a good thing. Um, and those are really uh, the two very most important factors because uh, nutritional incompleteness and inflammation are the two things which are responsible for almost every disease process known to man.
So if we can deal with that in the diet, so much better. Uh-huh. Is that all you need to do to have a healthy life? No, you need to also connect electrically to the earth as much time as possible. You need to avoid non-native EMF frequencies as much as possible. Uh, you need to avoid artificial light at the wrong time of the day. Um, you need to have a low stress environment insofar far as that's possible. Uh, obviously, you optimal stress because no stress is dead and too much stress is dead. It's you know, one of those type of things. Uh, so yes, again, it's multifaceted, but at the end of the day, um, diet is very, very important. Um, and my take on it is that the carnivorous diet is very, very good. And uh, all the anecdotal stuff available today would, would support me on that. Um, I'm looking at how things appear to be right here and right now, yeah. Appears according to what? Well, according to the anecdotes that I've been outlining and according to the, some of the science I've been outlining, that's how it seems to me. But that's my interpretation of the science. And if you're looking at anecdotes and how seems how some of the science seems to appear, then you could conclude uh, the kind of diet I eat is how... you, you absolutely could you cherry pick gary if you if you have confirmation bias if you don't look at the literature as a whole body if you look at the stuff that you want to see and you read the stuff that you want to see then absolutely you could form that opinion you'd be wrong but you could still do that absolutely you make claims a lot like i, I would be wrong mm, that's my opinion but- Okay. Uh, That's my very qualified opinion. And also, although some people said that we had chemistry, we were entertaining together, but at the same time, it was weird for me because our personalities clashed, at least for me, he continued to act in a way that left me just hanging there, not knowing where to go, and saying things that were unorthodox, not what you'd expect someone to say. So again, it left me hanging. An overriding problem I have with the carnivore diet is it goes completely opposite of of our Biological design. No, it doesn't, Gary. Why would you say such a thing? What do you base that on? You don't know what I base that on? I'm asking you what you base that on. Oh, um, anthropological. Ah, so so glorified associative data again. High-level studies, Gary. Is that what you've got? No, no studies. But just uh, like the classification for species. And so the classification of species, there's never been errors made there. There's never been updates made to the classifications of things. No big ones. Nonsense. Uh, We know. Sorry, Gary, that's nonsense. There have been massive, massive changes made. What is our classification human for humans? Well, we're Homo sapiens sapiens. What, what kind that's of animal? What, what classification well, of animal? We are related, if that's what you mean. We are related to the great apes. Uh-huh. But we are, we are a species in our own right. But we're not just related. We are very closely related to the great apes. Yeah. So what's your point? Uh, okay. <laughs> If, if, and we're more closely related to them than carnivorous animals. We share ninety six percent of the same DNA as a fruit fly, Gary. What's your point? Uh, that's not a classification, is it not? A fruit fly is a fly, and it's it's an insect. It's, it's very very different from us, isn't it, Gary? But we share ninety six percent of oh. the same DNA. Oh, I'm not talking about DNA then. I don't. Well, what are you talking about? Because that's the thing that determines how we work, isn't it? I don't really know. Well, that's what you need to know that's before you enter into such a discussion with a scientist, Gary. Pretty wacky, there. Yeah, that's that's very... Let me give you the answer. Yes, DNA is the thing that determines how we work. DNA controls everything. The are DNA you... and and the interaction of that DNA with the environment in which it finds itself. Would, 
would you say you are conveying that our DNA has changed from uh, the last few hundred thousand years? A yes, lot? of course it has. To, um, so much. A lot of a lot of the relative term, Gary. Well, would it be to the point that we should eat very differently than what we did a hundred thousand years ago? Um, I guess the fact of the matter is we do eat very differently from the way we did a hundred thousand years ago, and it's been very, very negative on our health. He changed the goalpost. See, he knew when I was setting up a goalpost somewhere. He seems to be smart and really tricky. And so when he saw me working towards my goal, he moved the goalpost, he continued to sidetrack. This was really difficult, which is why I really couldn't win anything, much of anything here. He's manipulative, you can't beat him. So I decided, well, I can beat him later in my own videos, given the time and putting things together in a certain way to show you what exactly happened. Well, I don't eat very differently. But if you eat a, a largely vegetarian and or fruitarian diet, then yes, you do eat very differently from what your ancestors did 100,000 years ago. Because the fruits and vegetables that we eat today, Gary, did not fucking exist 100,000 years ago. They've been manipulated by mankind over generations and generations into completely different species. They are not the same thing. They've been altered. They've been altered almost beyond recognition. Uh, not to the point of not being the same foods. Yes, they have, Gary. You're completely are you saying, mistaken. Are you saying that fruit was not it's, anything? It's not, it's not remotely the same as it was 100,000 so years ago. They, no. weren't, they weren't mostly water? Nope. They were mostly fiber. They had much lower sugar content. They were much more fibrous. This is something you could even even a Google search will show this one up for you, Gary. You really need to do your homework, son. I think this is going very well. They had much lower sugar content. They were much more fibrous. This is something you could even even a Google search will show this one up for you, Gary. Can you uh, <laughs> make this too easy? <laughs> so the fruit we know well. Are you going to ask me the same question again? Because I'll give you the same answer again. Yes, Gary, it's a completely different thing were there no water-based carb-based things no, that's, not what I, that's not what i said gary i said fruits well, and vegetables were completely different a hundred thousand years ago to what they are now most of the fruits and vegetables that we eat in our diet today those of us that do that did not fucking exist a hundred thousand years ago did you say most yes very few of the vegetative, vegetative oh. matter we eat now existed a hundred thousand years ago and those that did were completely different so what i'm trying to just get at is back in those times was there some kind of food that resembles fruit that that's carb based and high in water that, that you could eat <laughs> like like i do well Again, let me give you the same answer again, Gary. Oh, I, I, yes. I've been hearing that yes. answer for years. I know this. Well, then why are you asking I the same question? You're going to get the same answer. Yes, fruit existed. It was a completely different thing to what is available in the supermarkets today. Okay. So what did monkeys eat back then? my understanding is that monkeys back then ate a uh, lot of uh, leaf matter they ate the fruits such that they were at that time at the time of year that those fruits were available which was seasonal mostly 
uh, except for those apes that lived in an equatorial zone, uh, in which case there was probably different sorts of fruits available at different times of the year, absolutely, but it was not the same stuff that we've got now. And that said, what monkeys ate is completely irrelevant to what human beings should eat. Completely irrelevant. Again, you're, making, you're making some claim. I'm making yeah, some really claims that are based on common fucking sense, Gary. Wow. The common sense fallacy, common sense, is for use in everyday life over mundane things. Not to be used in something as complex as biology. What you see in there is a video I made a couple weeks ago. Bart is actually aligning with this Dr. Dingleberry. You might want to check out his form of common sense. A person can be smart and dumb at the same time. And it's actually common with extremely educated people. The common sense is that our bodies are so similar to monkeys. And almost the same as a fruit fly, Gary. What's your no. fucking point? <laughs> Let's see what else I got written down here. That's a good idea. Jesus. This is what I'm talking about with confirmation bias. It doesn't matter what the logical science says. You're still going to hang on to the same ridiculous idea. You've asked me the same question four or five times in the last five minutes, and I've given you the same answer every single I was just thinking about how Bart was saying all this DNA stuff as if it's kind of common knowledge and I should know it. Never heard this theory before, except for the blood type diet. I don't know how similar that is to what he's talking about. So I went to ask the only person I knew who was, who was in the field of nutrition for many years, my mother, who's now a retired nutritionist, just to get her reaction to this. I told her about this with a straight face, no emotion, not letting her see what I thought about it. And very soon into what I was saying, she rolled her eyes. I just wanted to convey to her the, the kind of thing Bart was saying here. And she proceeded to roll her eyes two more times. She also has never heard of this. And then she said, and I asked her, well, what are you basing your view on here? Why are you dismissing this so much? And she said, <laughs> it's just common sense. <laughs> Aware of where I'm going with it. I heard. Maybe it's because I've heard this argument a hundred thousand fucking times. A hundred times. And of course I know where you're going. But, but mm. Mm. it's tough when you the, the the facts and logic destroy the vegetative nonsense as it does every single time, isn't it? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> All right, here is a screen cap of when the debate was happening and the comments were coming in. I was just looking at this and saw that. One of my big biggest trolls, Donner Party, actually said something pretty good here, positive about me. He said, get out while you're ahead. <laughs> That's what I was doing with each one of those segments. I saw that I was ahead. He suddenly just looked bad, and so I decided, okay, now we'll move on to something else. Now, here are some comments under Bart's video, a duplicate of the debate that I have on my channel. And here's some comments underneath my video. I got a few really great comments. I think they're exaggerating though. I wasn't great in the debate, but I did make some points. And Bart did slip up a lot because there's something wrong with his brain. Well, I think this is going very well. <laughs> <laughs> Conductor. And the donkeys on his tail, Tennessee for sale.